my lovely friends in Christ, it's always a blessing to come your way with God's Word. This is Stephen, the child evangelist. I'm sure you are ready to learn today. So kindly get your Bible, your notebook, and your pen as we begin our lesson for today. Is Jonah's story an act of science? A couple of years ago, I taught a lesson in my Sunday school class on how every child can talk to God. And when we go to people who prayed in the Bible, I started mentioning people like Jonah who prayed in the belly of a fish. I mentioned Lydia who also prayed at the river banks. And lastly, Apostle Paul and Silas who also prayed in prison. Then one of my students raised her hand and asked, Seven, my school teacher said that Jonah's story in the Bible is an act of science because scientifically, a whale swallowed a man and vomited him back at the seashore like Jonah. I became quiet for a minute. Then I asked her, so what do you also believe the story is all about? Was it an act of science because it happened to someone? Then she said, I believe it when my teacher said it, but since you mentioned Jonah, I really want to ask for your opinion. Honestly, that day, the Holy Spirit spoke through me to help her and the other children to understand that Jonah's story is not an act of science. I'm sure you are eager to find out more about the answer I gave. Well, that is our topic for today. Is Jonah's story an act of science? According to the Bible, in Jonah chapter 1 and 2, Jonah's story is one of its kind and very unique, including others which makes people to doubt if it really happened. God spoke to Jonah to go to Nineveh and present a message of repentance. But he ignored it and decided to run away from God. To better understand the whole event, let's look at where each town was located on a map during that time. Jonah was in Judah when God spoke to him. Then he went to Joppa to board a ship going to Tarshish, which is directly opposite Nineveh. This is located in our modern day country called Spain. Now, right in the middle of the journey, the ship was hit by a strong storm at the Mediterranean Sea. The Bible never mentions the exact time the storm came, but scientifically, by the study of the weather in the Mediterranean area between Turkey and Egypt, storms happening in that area causes the sea temperature to be very cold and it ranges from 15 degrees Celsius to 18 degrees Celsius. So if we go by this proof, Jonah wouldn't have survived even for an hour. Why am I saying this? You see, science has proven that in a situation like that, as the sea water is very cold, the person staying in that condition or in that temperature for one minute to three minutes will experience rapid breathing in the first place. His heart rate and blood pressure would increase. The next three to 30 minutes would even be very challenging because the person will lose the function of his muscles. He will experience numbness and will experience difficulty to swim if help does not come. Science has also proven that the next 30 to 1 hour of a person in such a cold temperature of seawater will be more disastrous because his core body temperature will begin to drop significantly. Shivering and confusion will set in, in his mind. He can also be unconscious which can be caused by severe hypothermia. Now, severe hypothermia is when the body temperature drops to 28 degrees Celsius. One of the things you must understand is that the normal human body temperature ranges from 36.1 degrees Celsius to 37.1 degrees Celsius. So scientifically, if Jonah had stayed in the sea for even 30 minutes, he might have died. Again, scientifically, there are dangerous sea creatures like jellyfish, lionfish, Scorpion fish, stained rays, mora eels, sea urchins, and weaver fish in that area too. And they could have inflicted stained pains and poison venoms on Jonah 
if he had gotten in contact with them. You see the reason why Jonah's story can be an act of science? The truth is, we are not done yet. The story goes on to say that God, in his own wisdom and awesome power, knowing very well what could happen to Jonah, prepared a great fish to swallow him. Now let's read from Jonah chapter 1, verse number 15 to 17. This is what it says. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from it raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Wow! God is so powerful. But this is where it gets very interesting. Scientifically, it has been proven that there are three possible fish that could have swallowed Jonah. And interestingly, one of them still exists till today in the world's oceans from Arctic to Antarctic. The largest population of these fish are found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian oceans. The name of this fish is called Chryseta macrocephalus. According to scientific research, this fish can grow up to the length of 79 feet, which is almost the same length if you are to put in line two larger school buses following each other. The second fish that could have also swallowed Jonah is called Carcharocles megalodon. It can also grow up to the length of 44 to 67 feet. This fish is no more in the sea, but science proved that it also used to be in the Atlantic, Pacific, and in the Indian Oceans. The third fish is called Lysictis, and this fish is also no more found in the sea again and it can also grow to the length of about 29 feet to 54 feet. Science has proven that all these three have the ability to swallow a whole human being. So scientifically, it was possible that any of these fish at that time could have been prepared by God to swallow Jonah. But I know some of you will be asking, so Seben, what about blue whale? And, and fin Well, the truth is, scientifically, none of them has the ability to swallow a whole human being, even though they are big in size. But rather, the diameter of a blue whale's throat is just 10 inches to 12 inches wide. And, and fin whale also has a throat diameter of only 8 inches, making it impossible to swallow a human being. But even if they do, it will only stay in the mouth, but eventually, in some minutes, it will spit it out. Alright, as we continue our lesson, science has proven to us that if any animal or even human beings eat anything into the stomach, there is a process that the food goes through, and that is called digestion. This is when every food eating is broken down into smaller particles. But in the case of Jonah, he was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, and Jonah did not digest in the belly of the fish. Honestly, this can't be the act of science. There is nothing like scientific explanation. The only explanation here is that this is truly and purely the act of God Almighty. I believe that Jonah thought his life has come to an end, but when he did not die the first few minutes, he began to pray in the belly of the fish. Scientifically, Jonah should have been digested, but nothing like that happened because God was involved. Jonah prayed from the belly of the fish, and God heard him. Let's read what God did again in Jonah chapter 2, verse number 10. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Wow! God spoke to the fish, and he vomited Jonah on dry land. What a miracle! This fish heard God's voice and obeyed. My dear friends in Christ, if you look and assess the event that took place in Jonah's story, we can conclude that if Jonah's story were to be scientific based, he wouldn't have survived. 
but rather today we can conclude with evidence from signs that Jonah's story was an act of God, not an act of science. It is only God who can make this possible. So what can we learn from this lesson? First, if Jonah prayed from the belly of the fish and God heard him, then every child can talk to God. Second, if the fish also heard the command of God to vomit Jonah on a dry land, then God can also speak to every child. So first of all, how can every child talk to God? So that I don't get distracted or don't get disturbed by anyone or anything. But it are forced and concentrate and think about God. Now the second thing is that without the paradigm and that to show them respect, the lesson that you have to do is that not to hold my hands together either this week or this week. But at least you can fly for Then if we need to tell about what you want him to hear from you by addressing him by father or my Lord, or hear for any one of them is open. Then finally, you end your prayer in the name of Jesus. So we see this the very basic steps that you can follow to pray or to talk to God. The next part of this lesson is what do we tell God when we are free? How can we talk to God in a way that we don't just look well anyhow? So we are going to learn. Now, before we can be able to communicate or talk to God, we need certain reminders to help us to know exactly what we need to say when we are talking to God. And what we are going to use as our reminder is our head or our fingers. So first, I'm going to use my left hand. They will go to okay? All right. The first thing that you need to do, the first thing that you remind me when we are going to agree with your hand, Spread out like this. Your calm should always remind you that before you start praying, you need to turn the If you are going to pray, turn the ball. What are some of the things that you I'm going to give you three things that we can turn the ball. The first thing that you have to turn the right. You can also turn the ball for your coming. Okay? They'll pray and tell what the thing that he has created for you. That's what we're drawing. So these three things. Can be your prayer point as you are praying from God. Remember back, I said your heart to remind him of your various steps for prayer. That is how about now that the next reminder which you can always use remind you after you got prayed for just city because we make it a twist. And this one is a reminder of your prayer for continuous. See, I show them they have a lot of things that we have here when it comes to thinking. There are other things that we see without a mark, which is wrong. And there are things that we do, quite as well as well. And so, any day, at any time we are praying, we need to ask for the of sin. That the sin that we have done in the mind, they think wrong it. And the thing that we have said, which is wrong. And the thing that we have done, which does not be useful. And so, when you are praying for the evil of sin, please bring taking that in prayer. What? You know that the devil will do a lot of things which are very bad, like stealing, like bullying, like stopping our feet when our parent calls us for easy, insulting our prayer. All these things, and when you pray, you ask God what you want. Now that we are coming to the thing, now the first thing that we are going to use as a reminder that of our next step, break or the top to go is now okay your power should remind you great comedy mechanisms for world comedy in general but me will ask you so what do i say what do i tell you about my comedy well i'm going to give it first thing that you've got to go right pray and tell about bless your heart the second is pray and ask for people tip your food and then third thing is that pray I was about to provide the needs of your family. These are the three things that you can talk to God about. For the start, at least. So that is, you can look good with it. At first, so when you are done, ready for your family, the next thing is that you have to pray for or to talk to God about. That will result in 
index. This one should go mildly gray or gloss. But the all was saying, so, so what do I drink for wine? So what do I tell for both my eyes? But I'm only giving you three things that you can talk about about the sun this and this is what you can tell about. And this is what you can bring me. You can put it, ask God, he dealt with the public and teach you this way. And you can also pray to ask God to pray there, wherever you be. And also, pray at God to provide their needs. But he said that he prayed, you can pray. For your son is. So now you're going to the next finger, which is your tablet finger, among all the things. Now the middle finger should remind you when you are praying to pray for all those who are in the highest position. I mean, those who are, I mean, those who are in authority. I mean, the doctors, lawyers, judges, dead, pastors. I mean, all those big men. You can pray for them. And ask God to give them wisdom so that they can take the only decision for the country. You can also pray for God to protect them. So then the next reminder that I can always use is this real finger. This finger should remind you brave all who are sick. It could be a sibling who is sick. It could be any relative. It could be a friend. So when you're praying for the sick, you're praying for all of them. But if you're praying for the sick, what do you say? All right, I'm going to give you his basic prayer point. You can pray and ask God to heal them. And you can also pray and ask God to give them strength so that they will be strong again. And that will to all you need. Now, that is your little finger. Should remind you to pray for yourself after you have finished praying. And this is what you can tell God when you are praying. Pray that God will protect you wherever you find yourself. Especially when you school, coming back from school, in the house, at the playground. Tell God about it. Just pray about it. Not that is so, you cannot pray to ask God to guide you with His Spirit. Heaven will go, so He will be guiding you in every gentle, everything that you will be doing. Not just to it, but He should guide you in terms of everything that you want. That you can also pray and now go to provide your need into the God covenant. So you see, it's very simple. And then, finally, you can end this prayer in the need of sleep. Then you add a bed to wait. That's all. All right, my last to bullet words now, it is your turn to talk to go about all that we have just said. Remember, I said that your path to remind you what I prayed when you need to pray, your path to remind you to thank God. Then, after thanking God, you make a feast. The one you make a feast, the feast you remind you to pray to God to forgive you the sin that you have done, might your sight. And then you have done it. Then after that, you release your father. Your father to remind you to pray for your family. Then to release your finger finger, this one too should remind you to pray for Sunday school. Don't no forget that. Then your without finger should remind you to pray for all the who in authority. Me, the lawyers, the judges, all the big people in the house. Don't forget that. Including God. Then the red finger should remind you to pray for a state. It could be that the one that the father of the people, the city or whoever, is it you might not know why I pray, God will be in touch with Then lastly, you pray for yourself. And don't forget that pray for yourself. And I can assure you that all in every single way that you tell him. Alright, now you know how to talk to God. But how can God talk to you? Number one, God speaks to us through the scriptures, that is the Bible. Number two, God speaks to us through our parents at home, so listen to them. Number three, God speaks to us through our Sunday school teachers, so never stop going to church. And finally, God speaks to us through pastors, apostles, evangelists, and prophets. So now that you know, speak to God at any given day or time. And I can assure you that he will surely respond to you.
all right this is where we bring our lesson to an end but i don't want you to forget to ask mom or dad to order some of the bible story book that i have written for you the truth is your life will never be the same after reading it so till i come your way once again with another fantastic lesson this is Sermon, the child evangelist have a blessed life in christ